Hi, and welcome to another RPD video. In today's video, we'll be discussing RPD design sequence. It is important to note that there are many design philosophies out there. While they're all valid, they differ in the way they approach class choices, plating of teeth, stress releasing, and indirect retention. The philosophy we will be explaining today is a hybrid of many design philosophies out there that focuses on evidence, convenience, and simplicity. During this lecture, we will follow those seven steps in order to design each of the four main Kennedy classes of RPD. Let's start with the first step, guide planes. In order to properly design guide planes, it's important to first survey the model. If you're not familiar with surveying or guide planes, we will leave links to the videos that you can watch to get familiar with them. Guide planes are positioned adjacent to each edentulous area. Next, let's move on to rest seats. We will leave a link up here for a video on rest seats if you're not familiar with them. Like guide planes, rest seats are placed on the teeth adjacent to the edentulous space. Additionally, rest seats should be placed on both sides of the arch, and as symmetrically as possible. This means that some rest seats are going to be placed on the dentate side of the arch, like in class 2 and class 3 cases here. The next step is the identification of the fulcrum line. The fulcrum line is an imaginary line that goes through the distal most rests on class 2 and 1 RPDs, and on the anterior most rests on class 4, about which the RPD may rotate. It's important to note that there are no fulcrum lines on class 3 RPDs. The next step is to provide indirect retention for class 1, 2, and 4. Indirect retention prevents the tissue away movement of the RPD denture base during function. For more information on indirect retention, please find the video linked here. Indirect retainers should be placed on a tooth that is located perpendicular to the fulcrum line and as far away as possible from it. In certain situations like class 1 and 4, this is not possible due to the position of the fulcrum line. Let's move on to the next step, retentive clasps. Retentive clasps are placed on teeth adjacent to the edential spaces. Additionally, each arch should have two to four clasps for adequate retention. Due to the need for stress breaking, the position of the rest seats on class 1, class 2, and class 4 cases will need to be changed for the use of an I-bar clasp. For more information on stress breaking, please refer to the video linked here. Separation comes next. Reciprocation is provided by rigid metal structures like minor connectors, plates, and reciprocal clasps that are used to counteract the forces exerted on abutment teeth by retentive clasps. The reciprocal elements are added to each retentive clasp. Finally, major connectors are added. The choice of major connector usually depends on factors such as number of missing teeth, the periodontal status of the teeth, and the size of the arch. For more information on choosing major connectors, please find the video linked here in this page. If periodontal conditions are adequate, the number of missing teeth are not excessive, usually the major connector that covers the least amount of soft tissue is chosen to promote patient comfort. However, if the patient's periodontal conditions are compromised, then the use of lingual plating and maximum coverage of soft tissue is recommended for additional support. With that, the steps of designing an RPD are complete. So let's do a little recap. The first thing that's added are the guide planes, followed by the rest seats, then identify the fulcrum line, and then use it to determine where to place our indirect retainers. Then we add the retentive clasps, we add the reciprocal elements, and finally the major connector. Now that we have a basic understanding of RPD design, it's important to point out a few special situations. Firstly, cases with clasps anterior to the fulcrum line, like this case with the Kennedy Class 2 Mod 1, as you might notice, the clasp assembly on the tooth number 28 exists entirely anterior to the fulcrum line. Because of this, the whole clasp assembly tends to lift off the tooth when pressure is applied on the edential segment. Therefore, the best clasps to be placed in this area to ensure proper stress breaking are wrought wire clasps. This is due to the flexibility of wrought wire clasps compared to other cast clasps. Similar situations will also occur any time a modification space exists anterior to the fulcrum line as is the case with many class 1 and class 2 cases. Another special situation includes class 4 cases, in which the dentulous segment exists in the anterior side of the partial. Because of this, stress-breaking I-bar clasps will need to be associated with distal rests in order to effectively disengage the undercut. 
Being able to design partial dentures for every single situation while abiding to a specific design philosophy can be difficult at times. Therefore, we've created an AI RPD designer to act as your reference for future cases. The AI RPD designer called AI Dental can be accessed by typing www.aidental.app from any browser. Once at the main page, go ahead and click RPD Design. You can pick from whatever design philosophy you find suitable for you, but the ASDO or Arizona School for Dentistry and Oral Health, as well as the SPEAR philosophy, most closely abide to the philosophies I explained in this lecture. You can then click which teeth are missing, decide which abutment criteria exist, and find out which design is most suitable for you. For more information on how to use the AI Dental RPD Designer, find the video linked in the description or up here. Thank you for joining us for this video, and we hope it was informative. See you in the next RPD video.